Live. Brought to you by Helene Curtis, makers of Stop F deodorants, blowing cream, spray, and stick, suave hairdressing, and end and dandruff treatment shampoo. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. And now, a gentleman who is wearing a bachelor button as a boutonniere, which doesn't fool me for one minute, Mr. Martin Gable. You don't think I'd be so foolish as to try to fool you, do you? Yes. <laughs> On my left, the justly celebrated newspaper woman, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Your celebrity. And on my left are devil may care, peripatetic fly by night Ooh. panelist, and it serves. Dorothy ate a gardenia just before she came on this show. No telling what she's going to do now. And it's my pleasure to introduce our superb, practically fantastic panel moderator the always articulate John Charles Daly. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. The panel is in fine fettle this evening, and we have some fine occupations with which to test their metal, because they're in fine fettle. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before my friends a little bit later in the show, and we'll meet our first challenger in just one. All right, panel, we're ready for the first challenge of the evening. Will our first contestant come in and sign in, please? Rona? Rona Levine, is that right? <laughs> is it Miss or Mrs. Levine? Miss Levine. Miss Levine. Miss Levine, the panel. Good evening. Good, evening. Good evening. Would you come over here and join me now? Tell me, Miss Levine, are you familiar with the way we keep score? Yes. Don't you find it confusing? No, that's very no, nice of you. I'm glad that. you don't find it confusing. <laughs> but since you know how we keep score, let's let the folks at home and those who've been nice enough to join us in the audience in the theater know exactly what your line is. One bit of help. Miss Levine is salaried, and we'll begin the general questioning with Bennett Cerf. John, did you omit the place where Miss Levine came from purposely or accidentally? Just wanted to see if you were all on your toes. Miss Levine, will you tell them where you're from? Well, I live in New York. That's, don't say another word. <laughs> Miss Levine, uh, you're a very trim, well garbed, well coiffured lady. Let's get our Have mind you, I, on the show, Mr. Sir. <laughs> I was about to ask if you had anything whatever to do with the world of fashion. No, I don't. One down to nine to go, Miss Francis. Do you work for a profit-making organization? Yes. Not much profit this year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do people come to you for your service? Yes. Uh, can more than one person come at a time? Yes. To be helped by you? Yes, they can. Uh, do you show them anything that uh, might benefit them in some way? No. Small conference. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, we want to be completely fair. I think She'd that, show uh, you something that would benefit you in some way, huh? Yeah. Actually, yeah. if I were to avail myself of Miss Levine's services, I think we would all agree that the service having been delivered, she would have shown me something which I would hope to have some benefit from. I see. Can you benefit both men and women? Yes, I can. Is there any movement attached to your job? Yes. Do you ever perform where there is music? No. 
It would be in the most incidental way if it were right. to show up. That's two down and eight to go, Mr. Gable. Would what you do be considered athletic in any way? No. Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, may we rule out the theater and motion pictures as your profession? Yes, rule out. As well as athletics? You're not going to flip it? No, no, I it? just... Uh, You're making me yeah. nervous. Having fun, <laughs> that's all. Uh, would you say that there was any... That there was any activity other than brain work involved in your job? Yes. Uh, is it something that requires a special skill? Or talent? No. Or that you're just being four, modest. Four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Miss Levine, you said there was movement connected with what you did. That's right. Would this be the movement of any kind of vehicle? Possibly. Would it be a vehicle that is uh, firmly rooted to the ground? That is, I mean, it might move, but would not go up in the air or <coughs> underwater or on water. Would it do any of these things? Is that what you're asking? Well, uh, no, the way I put it, if it does do any of those things, I I'd get a no, because I was asking if it was possibly a land vehicle, like an automobile or a bus, Yes, that's right. It is a land vehicle. Yes. Has it got anything to do with an automobile? Yes. Do you teach people how to drive an automobile? I would like to. <laughs> that still gives you a no answer. That's five down and five to go, Miss Fred. <laughs> if you would, yes. We think we know down here by now. If you would like to teach somebody how to drive, it means that you do have arguments with other people on the road, that you might disagree with the way they turn or the way they move on the road. No. That no? makes it six down and four He's to go. not a <laughs> What was it you were saying, Martin? We thought we knew. <laughs> As in most of those cases, we don't. Is driving something your central profession? Driving something the central profession? A vehicle of some kind. No. That makes it seven down and three to go. I'm going to give you one more minute. Now, John has said that if he availed himself of your services, you would show him something. Yes. Has this something something to do with the vehicle that we're trying to discover? It could be. Mm -hmm. Could it be something else? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Uh, in showing him, would you be trying to sell him anything? I beg your pardon? Would you be trying to sell him anything? No. In showing no. him No. That's eight down and two to go, Mr. Sir. Well, Miss Levine, have you got anything to do with some automobile company in one capacity or another? No. That's nine down and one to go, Miss Francis. Uh, you want to have do a Do you know... No, may I ask a question? Mm -hmm. May I ever. Uh, do you know something about the interior of cars? We all do. No, I don't. I don't. <laughs> you, mean, you mean engines? Does it mean something to you in your work to know something about what goes on inside of a vehicle? No. No, that's ten down and no more to go. And I must say that this was a real rough one because Miss Levine is a uniformed doorman at Le Valois restaurant here in New York and has so been for two months. She shows people is the door. Shows them yes. the door of Le Valois, <laughs> see? And this is about one of the few times when you're shown the door that it, you might consider you have some benefit like there from, <laughs> see? A good restaurant, too. Thank you. And Doubly so, now. Properly accoutred in uniform with whistle and, and things well, like she... What do you wear? Uniform? Well, I wear a, uh, a doorman's hat with the name of the restaurant on it, Le Valois. I have a uh, whistle on a string of pearls. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I wear a regular street dress, uh, something very, you know, simple and functional. What about at night? <laughs> That's when I work, at night. Oh. That'll be all. <laughs> and actually, with the string of pearls and the whistle, and she has this chap that she hires to blow the whistle when she needs something yeah. done. Thank you very much. Thank it's you. nice to puzzle the panel, and you did. panel that was I told you it was going to be a rough night let's see what you can do with the second challenger will you come in and sign in please yep. 
Jeffrey. Jeffrey Ford. Is that right, sir? New York City. New York City. Well, fine. Then uh, I think perhaps this is not necessary, really. Mr. Ford, the panel. Panel, Mr. Ford. Yes. Will you come and join me, sir? Are you familiar with the way we keep score? Yes. Good. Then yes. let's let the audience and the theater and the folks at home know exactly what your line is. Mr. Ford is self-employed, and let's begin the general questioning with uh, Mr. Gable. Mr. Ford, do you wish you were born in Detroit? <laughs> I got it. <laughs> I have a wife for to get a joke like that. <laughs> Ford, you see, and that. Uh, go ahead, Martin. Thank you. You're dead on that one. <laughs> is there a product connected with what you do, Mr. Ford? No. That's one down. It's been a glorious <laughs> evening. <so. laughs> Don't be discouraged, Martin. Remember? I never am. Miss Gilgallan? Then you specialize in services, Mr. Ford. Yes. Uh, could all of us on the panel enjoy your services? I think so. I say yes. And I can think of some who might need them. Well, go on. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I take it that people are better off in some way after having availed themselves of your service. I make that claim, yes. Do they do this voluntarily? Yes. Uh, do people come to you one at a time ever? No. Oh. That's a uh, small problem, please. Dorothy, I think in all fairness to you, we'll give you a no. That makes <laughs> it two down and eight to go, yeah. sir. Mr. Ford, do you have anything to do with the world of entertainment? No. What a hesitant no. If Mr. Ford will permit, only because we have very general terms of reference here, I would say we'll give a qualified yes to that and hope it won't mislead them All too right. much. All right. Would that connection then, that rather dubious connection, Mr. Ford, have anything to do with speech? Elocution of any sort. Speech or elocution, you mean as an end result? No, I mean, would it, would it would the work involve teaching people how to talk properly? Oh, well, that's a, you, you mean that's teaching no. people how to talk. Yeah, that's, that's right. No. That's three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Do you speak to large audiences or do your work before large audiences of people, Mr. Ford? What do you mean by large, Miss Arlene? More than one. Well, <laughs> Dorothy advised me that my answer should be more than one. <laughs> You're saying yes. Yes? Yes. Do you advise them in any way, Mr. Ford? Yes. Uh, would people be liable to come to you if they had a problem of some kind, then? If they had a problem of uh, some kind? I mean, you mean in... Yes, if yeah. they had a problem of some kind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are your services for both men and women? Yes. Are you paid for these services uh, by direct payment as opposed to ticket buying? Mm -hmm. <coughs> <coughs> oh, I see. Well, fine. In that they event, buy I tickets think... for Mr. Ford's uh, performance or whatever? You anticipated something, yes, that's right. You've got to know. That makes All right, it John. four down and six to they go, Mr. Gable. Tickets. They do buy tickets. They do buy tickets. Mm -hmm. Would I be right in saying that, not, that some of them uh, achieve your services in another way without buying tickets? You mean somebody mm -hmm. gets them on a pass? Mm -hmm. Yes, the answer is yes. Thank you. That has led me... Exactly nowhere. <laughs> you address groups of people, some of whom buy tickets to hear you, and others you either let in free or they belong to a yearly plan of some kind. No, 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 no. That's very good, Martin. Thank you got you. yourself I a little time. Out. That's fine. That's fine. Since I haven't a five... clue, I, I'd better be off. <laughs> five dollars five. I'm going to give you one more minute because you don't seem to be getting close to this one. All right, Mr. Ford. I don't care who pays you, but I would like to know what you do. Do you do anything 
of a hypnotic nature. <laughs> no. That makes it six down and four to go. Mm -hmm. Bennett served. Mr. Ford, when these people have bought tickets, do you give them any instructions on how to... Yes, you do. Please, children. Hey, 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 hey. No conference, please, Mr. Sir. A lot of, lot of, lot of talk going on here. <laughs> Those gardenias. Mr. Ford, uh, do you teach people or give them advice of anything connected with family life? <laughs> no. <laughs> I've had it. I'm flipping the whole mess. No, I just ain't going to get in any more trouble. That's all there is to it. No, actually, you're not getting close, and the minute is up, and I will tell you that this, is, again, was a very tough occupation. Mr. Ford teaches a school for horse players. He lectures, and he has a correspondence service. <laughs> Mr. Ford tells you how to bet, in effect, how to, you know, read past performances and so forth, and he had 257 for his first lecture, Mr. so... Mr. Ford, you may not know this. But you were brought on this program for the specific purpose of advising me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, darling? Uh, I think Mr. Ford should also know that Martin had just ten seconds before you closed in on us decided that Mr. Ford was a clergyman. <laughs> <laughs> very much. We stuck him a bull yet <clears throat> and had you with us. <laughs> Tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first here is a word from our alternate sponsor. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which I asked my friends on the panel to blindfold themselves. Are those blindfolds all in place, panel? Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? Challenger, we go to a different form of questioning. You ask one question at a time in turn, moving clockwise, and we'll begin it all with Arlene Francis. Are you dearly beloved in the entertainment world? I will answer that with a good hearty yes for our guest, Mr. Gable. Are you male? Mm, yeah. Miss Kilgallen? Are you a singer? Mm, yeah. Uh, with our guest permission, I will say yes and no, which will indicate something. <laughs> Mr. Sir? Are you a star in motion pictures? Mm, yeah. Miss Francis? Have you appeared in the theater? Oh, sure. Mr. Gable? Have you appeared for a longer time in the theater than you have in motion pictures? Nah. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Are you under 30? <laughs> nah. <laughs> Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Are you in a picture that is either playing in one of the big theaters on Broadway now or is about to open there? No, I ain't. Three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Uh, since you sort of sing and don't, do you sort of dance and don't too? Oh, sure. Mr. Gable? I wasn't in your company the other night, was I? Yeah. Uh, Miss Kilgallen? Fred Astaire? to Fred, because maybe I did it, but I was torn between Scylla and Charybdis. You know, if you just left it singing, you might have oh. been off in, in space. May I say, uh, and I consider myself an authority, this is one of the great singers of all time. Yeah, yeah. Dorothy, the point I was making, he wasn't only a singer. <laughs> this was, and I think probably I'm responsible, Fred, but I didn't want to leave it there with just singing and no suggestion that there was no, other, no. other great Could talent. I make an amendment, Could I, I make little, an amendment um, to Dorothy's remark? I think Fred Astaire is one of the great everything of all time. That's a good one. Thank you very much. 
Fred, Fred, it's wonderful. This is Fred Astaire night on What's My Line. Oh, thank you. Thank you very, very much indeed. I loved it, really. There's only one thing left for you to do, and that is dance over Oh, no, please. <laughs> after this word from our sponsor. Now we have time for another challenger. Would you please come in and sign in? Right there. Nina or Nina? Nina. Nina Lawson, is that right? <laughs> Miss or Mrs? Miss. Miss Lawson, and where are you from? New York City. You're living in New York City? Yes, sir. You get a bit of a bird here in New York, did you know? Well, I came from Scotland. You came originally. from Scotland. Yes. I thought that might be so. Miss Lawson, the panel. Panel. Miss Lawson, would you come here and sit next to me? Do you know how we keep score, Miss Lawson? I do. Well, fine. Then we'll let the folks at home and those who are in our audience here know exactly what your line is. Three minutes. Miss Lawson is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with Dorothy Kilgallen. Uh, Miss Lawson, uh, is there a product involved in what you do? Yes, there is. And do you work for a profit-making organization? No. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Non-profit product. Young watch for you. <laughs> Non-profit from Scotland? <laughs> <laughs> May I go on, are we? Yes, sir. <laughs> <coughs> Miss Lawson, is your uh, employer then, is it some form of government? No. That's two it? down and eight to go. Miss Francis, I'd go to work on the product if I were you. I think we'd better work on the product, yes, John. Is this a useful product? Yes. I would say yes. Do most people have this product? No. Oh. All right. Rephrase okay. it. John will give it to me. <laughs> Sorry. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Gable. Most people do not have this product. Mm -mm. That's the first yes I've had all evening. <laughs> uh, is it worn more by men than women? What makes you think it's worn? Or is that your way of getting mm -hmm. the question? Is know. it worn more by men than women, did you say? Well, That's I must, fine. I leapt to the worn. Well, uh, you... I gather it's worn, so I've skipped everybody a question. You're still out there in space on that leap, son. I'd just get me a parachute right through right, the All right, but it's a wonderful you. Scotch accent you got there, John. <laughs> Four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Miss Lawson, is this product used more by one sex than another, would you say? No. That would you make it... You just say don't uh, everything, don't you? Five down That's and five to go, Mr. Sir. Miss Lawson, would this product be used more in times of stress or war than in times of peace? <laughs> no. No, but it's a wonderful question, Bennett. You'll enjoy it when we get this one with you. That's six down and four to go, Miss Francis. Miss Lawson, is this product uh, that you have to do with alive or has it ever been alive? <laughs> Never been no. Alive. No. And we've just run out of time, so I'll throw the rest over. Bennett, you're going to love this. Miss Lawson is the wig fitter for the Metropolitan Opera. <laughs> this is your first season with yes. Metropolitan. Well, fine. We'll send the panel down for whatever you can do for them. They need little help tonight. Yes. Nice to have you with us. Can you say good night to them? it was never alive. <laughs> <laughs> and on that happy note, until next week, this is John Daly saying good night, Miss Arlene Francis. Good night, Mr. John Daly. Good night, dear boy. Good night. For now. In a manner of speaking. <laughs>
Good night, Dorothy. Good night, Martin. I do keep track of you, don't I? Sure do. I've noticed that. <laughs> Good night, Pettit. And I wish... Arlene's noticed it, too. Gee, could it, wouldn't it be nice if we could have some more of Stare and Rogers movies, John? That yes. would be a wonderful Good night. idea. A wonderful idea. Thank you, Bennett. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us on What's My Life? If you'd like to attend our broadcast and see the panel and our guests in person... Write for tickets to What's My Line, CBS Television, 485 Madison Avenue, New York, 22, New York. Transportation for contestants on What's My Line is arranged by American Airlines. What's My Line is a Mark Fitzson, Bill Cotton production in association with the CBS Television Network. Now, Jim speaking.